The Lord be with you. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this 11th week or 11th Sunday after Pentecost. It's a blessing for us to be together wherever you may be gathered on this day. We give God thanks for this opportunity to be with one another. And so we begin this time of worship together. Let's join together in a word of prayer. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amazing grace has laid the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I got a I'm already standing on solid ground. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my Just did that grace appear the hour I first believed? Cause I got a peaceful, easy feeling. I know you won't let me down. Cause I'm all. Solid ground Through many dangers, toil and snare I have already come It's grace that Solid ground When we've been there Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun We've no less days to see We 
begin our time in worship with our order for confession and forgiveness, please join me. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Sparkling 
first reading is from Isaiah chapter 56, beginning with verse 1. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to the holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving breath among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The second reading is from Romans chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now have been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience the, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad that you are able to join us today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what scripture we're going to hear in just a few minutes. So our scripture today is from the book of Matthew, um, chapter 15, verses 10 through 28. So again, what's going on with you today? What? You're so quiet and calm. Isn't that nice? Is that what you would appreciate? I appreciate you in all aspects. That's very nice. Yes. But yes, I am choosing my words carefully today. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's it's interesting. Good for you. Is it, Nicole? <laughs> Is it good for me? Well, it's interesting because our scripture today uh, yeah. talks a lot about that. Did you know that? Is that why you're being very careful with your words? Yes. It, the scripture. Yes. Got me quiet. Oh. So boys and girls, our scripture today mm -hmm. is all about um, using kind words, being careful of what we say to other people, mm -hmm. um, and using our words carefully because mm -hmm. um, words hurt. Words mm -hmm. can be very, very hurtful in many mm -hmm. different ways. So um, you don't have to fall down and skin your knee or get hit. Um, words can hurt in the same exact way. Is mm -hmm. that why you're not? Well, you know, Nicole. I say a lot of words. They're always good words. Are they always, though? <laughs> I say a lot of words. I talk. You do. Yes, you I do. Think, I think people would notice and say, yes, Ashley, we usually hear a lot more from you by now. And I just mm -hmm. thought, maybe I should say less words. I should be more careful. Because let me tell you what, Nicole. Before I speak, I don't think. I'm not thinking. Oh. And then I say it, and then I, just, I, don't, I don't think of any of it. Mm -hmm. And then I never know. Did it. I, I, I understand that because guess what I do? I think about every little thing that's coming out of my mouth. I process it before I say it. Yep. And then as it's coming out, I'm very careful about what I say. Yes. So, so I is this it. scripture talking to me or talking to you? It's talking to both of us. 
this scripture today, Jesus telling us to be kind with our words, mm -hmm. to watch what we say, mm -hmm. um, is talking to both of us in, in very similar ways. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter if you love to talk and you're talking nonstop, or even if you process your words mm -hmm. and think about them a lot, hurtful things can still come out. Yes, yes. Has anyone ever told you, Nicole, to shut up? Yes. People tell me that a lot. <laughs> Which is a very hurtful, shut up are, is a very hurtful phrase. Those are hurtful words. They are very hurtful but words. But me, who talks a lot, has heard it. And I think you, yep. who is very careful about what she says, has heard it too. Yes. And I take that, and I've always thought, I should shut up. God says, be careful with what you say. But I'm always trying to make my words kind. Of and course. I always make sure that if I do slip and say something hurtful, mm -hmm. that I use my words to apologize yes. and think through what happened and why that came out that way. Yes. So I just have been thinking a lot about it and a lot more thinking and a little less a talking. You know what's so great is we hear um, to use kind words and be kind to our neighbor. We hear that in school a yep. lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, it's actually right out of the Bible as well, to be mm -hmm. kind to those around you and to exactly. use kind words. Exactly. So, yes. All this stuff was like, Ashley, be quiet, do this, blah, 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 normal life. And then all of a sudden Here the Bible all, all was like sudden. Jesus being like, girlfriend, <laughs> shush, shush. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to be a little more careful and cautious and be kind with my words. Did I mention today that you look lovely? <laughs> that so do you. That is very kind. kind. Thank you. Very kind. Thank kind you. words today. So nice. Did I mention I'm very happy that you're here with me today? That is so nice yeah. of you to say, Nicole. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, yes. We can do this just back and forth for an hour. All day. Why don't we close in prayer yes. with the good conversation and lesson that I've learned with you here. Oh, very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, how nice. You go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> Clasp your hands and bow your heads. Would you like to repeat after me? Yeah, okay. Okay. Good and amazing God. Good and amazing God. Thank you for bringing us all together today. Thank you for bringing us all together today. Thank you for the Bible story. Thank you for the Bible story. That reminds us to use kind words. That reminds us to use kind words. Help us to think about our words. Help us to think about our words. Help us to use kind words. Help us to use kind words. With everyone around us. With everyone around us. And all God's children. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you for being here with us today. Have a fabulous week, and we'll see you soon. Bye. This means bye. Bye. <laughs> all who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream. Of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out to deep. We sing, Come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord. the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out to deep we sing come lord jesus come
Gospel today comes to us from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning with the 10th verse. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but is what it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? Jesus answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, from our Heavenly Father and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've got a riddle for you. What is black and white and red all over? Do you know that one? Well, it's a newspaper. <laughs> what were you... you I know what you were thinking. How about what gets wetter as it dries? Well, that's a towel. <laughs> and, you know, I've got a, a fun little thing for you, too, here. The local bakery was going to start a new uh, ad campaign. And here's what their tagline was. Come and eat from our crummy plates. <whistles> okay, you're all groaning, I know, but... I give you those riddles and puns as a reason here today because Jesus sits down and takes the posture of a teacher in today's reading. He speaks his riddles and puns to awaken those listening to the power of words. Now we heard that the Pharisees speak of what goes into the body, Jesus says, as defilement, being unclean, and they were very adamant about that. In our time, we are all too aware that the cause of such defilement is not the cleaning of the food. It's not the food, but the cleaning of the food, and maybe nowadays the washing of our hands. It's not the food, but it's what comes with them, with it that creates the defilement. But hey, that's in our life of COVID here too. But Jesus turns the discussion to words, words that come out of the mouth. For it is with our very life breath that these words are given life. And words are given life, and we can't take that life back. So words are seen as an expression of the heart. Jesus gives this list of evil intentions as a result of people breaking the law in what we call sins, is looking only to oneself and trying to use the power of your words for your own benefit. But the way we use the word, words is, all, is what gives the power to kill or to give life to words. Now, in our grammar, we have a subject, an object, and a verb. So like my first riddle, black and white described, but red was not a color, it was a verb. And you were thinking, you know, you, so you've got to give your mind a second to catch up to the words sometimes before you respond. And it's what we hear in those riddles, the intent and the effect. You, heard, you hear about the law and gospel. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is in the grammar. The grammar of the law is what we call if-then. You know, if I am good then God will love me. The emphasis is on our actions and what the end result is. 
Now, gospel grammar is when because. When Jesus died on the cross, it was because he wanted to redeem us from our sins. The emphasis is on God's work and the benefits we receive from faith and trust in God's promise. So I invite you as you structure your words and you hear those words, is there a condition? Then that's often the law. If there's a promise and a benefit for you, that is gospel. And we are told the heart is the source of words. Our emotions influence our words. When something enters our life, it invokes an emotion. When we are given the opportunity, opportunity pardon me, to explore why that encounter brings that emotion and we reason how it affects us. This allows us to name the action and its effect upon us. And we now have the power to respond out of love instead of fear. And we all know what fear is, false evidence that appears real. When we are anxious or fearful due to sudden unforeseen changes and events, we are less able to get up to that reasoning part of our brain. The word anxiety literally means to hold our breath. That's why we sometimes say, just take a deep breath and you will be able to think more clearly. And our brains love oxygen, so give, them lots of, give it lots of oxygen. But being able to name and claim the words or actions that trigger our emotions gives us the power to again respond out of love instead of react out of fear. Remember that our words have life and power to change us and the world. And the world is something we need to take to heart. Now this lesson alone would be enough for us. But Matthew takes us out into the world to apply what we have been taught. Let's see how it goes for Jesus and his disciples. We continue on verse 21. Jesus left the place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David! My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is now in a place where there is a confusion as to who has the power. Jesus is the foreigner, but there is a power he brings due to his previous encounters with the people of this land. We don't know her name, but a local woman comes to Jesus calling out for justice. Her words are a cry to help and action, not for herself, but for her daughter. She recognizes something in Jesus' power and the abundance he has to offer. She speaks to his power, asking for help, using wit and persistence to be heard. Matthews uses these themes of the unexpected and lowly things that see Jesus for who he really is, that the alleged wise people don't understand, this son of David. The disciples see her as a problem. She's one of those people. She's a distraction. She's to be dismissed for her need. Have they learned nothing? Wasn't it just recently they had tried to tell Jesus to send away the 5,000 and they had fed them a banquet 
and taken up leftovers. I imagine Jesus ignoring the woman to set us another practical lesson for the disciples. He speaks the truth to everyone there. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But she gets it. She gets that God's faithfulness to Israel is the example for the rest who are to share the blessing, the Gentiles. That is why she is there, to ask for a piece of that promise. She doesn't quite quit. And a second response comes, Lord, help me. As she takes a posture of submission, throwing her very body at Jesus' feet, blocking his way. Her persistence is a claim to be heard. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, says Jesus. Now, is this a riddle or is it a slight to the woman to dismiss her? Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. A witty response of promise as I imagine Jesus smiling at her as he makes a connection with her. He knows her heart as she touches Jesus' very heart. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. The power of Jesus' words to heal her daughter happen instantly. He doesn't even have to, he tells her it's been done. Matthew uses the example of another outsider to remind the insiders that the promise of God's blessing comes to the Gentiles also. God's power is, comes through the Israelites to the Gentiles. They both have the promise. And God, who is all powerful and faithful, you know what his weakness is? His weakness is his love for humanity in its state of sinfulness. But he's not going to wait for us to be perfect. His faithfulness is enough for us all. Understanding how we use our own power is a life-giving response for ourselves and others. Understanding how our own experiences and knowledge contribute to our own biases. When we understand ourselves, we are better able to understand others and respond out of love. Maybe some questions to ask yourself. Are my words building others up or are they meant to keep someone stuck? Do you know someone's name? Notice, knowing someone's name, sharing your name, creates a relationship, a relationship of equal power. Where is the power in your relationship with that person? Simple things such as avoiding using the speech of us and them or them and those are ways to invite an openness in our relationships. It's not like this is a new topic for we heard from Paul and Isaiah today that they write about a life where power is used to build each other up. It is recognizing our commonality as faith in God's promise that brings us together. I'm not telling anyone how to act, but inviting you to examine your life and how it affects the world, one person at a time. We need all the different versions that God has created of humanity and seeing each other with God's heart and eyes as the children of God's kingdom. I leave you with one last pun to help you remember. When you follow the sun, the light of your heart leads the way. Amen. This arrangement of Softly and Tenderly by Dan Edwards was purchased in memory of Marv and Lois Erdman. Marv and Lois were longtime members and exuberant volunteers at Good Shepherd. They loved their church, they loved Bismarck community, and they were cheerleaders for a lot of us, especially the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church Choir and the Bell Program. So this is our tribute to Marvin Lois.
Together with the whole church, we affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. With you. I invite you to take a minute and share a sign of Christ's peace with those who you are gathered with in worship or simply by sharing the sign of the peace in the comment sections of our videos this day. At this time in our worship each week, we give God thanks. It's a time of thanksgiving as we gather together using the gifts of our hands, feet, financial resources, and voices to bless and serve God's children as God calls us to be together in mission to uh, share the shepherd's love with all of God's children. On this, my last Sunday serving as one of your pastors at Good Shepherd, I give God thanks for all the many ways that we have been blessed in order to be a blessing over these last 18 or so years. I pray that we continue to be strong as a congregation of Good Shepherd in order for the church around the world to be strong. It's through the gifts that we offer that God first blesses us with that enable all of this work to happen. The staff of Good Shepherd, our council, are tremendous gifts and leaders in the community. I'm so excited about the work that we're doing with projects like the Leadership for Faithful Innovation Mission Project um, in partnership with several congregations across our synod and in six other synods across the ELCA. It's work through Luther Seminary in St. Paul and the Lilly Foundation in Indiana. I also give thanks for our long-range planning committee that continues to work in this time of COVID-19 to make sure that our buildings are safe and that they are focused on our future work together as a congregation. So for all of the many ways that we bless one another, I give you thanks, I give God thanks. Let's continue with a song of thanksgiving. I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. I can walk down this dark and painful road. I can face every fear of the unknown. I can hear all God's children singing out. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. The same power that Power that 
join together in prayer as community, confident of God's care and helped by the Holy Spirit. So we pray this day for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air of all creatures needing to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and is consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing touch, especially those we lift to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, especially those that we remember in our hearts this day, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And all God's children say, Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Craig Schweitzer, January 26, 2014. We of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church called you to be pastor in this place, to proclaim God's word, to baptize and teach, to announce God's forgiveness, and to preside at the Lord's table. With the gospel, you have comforted us in times of sickness and trouble and at the death of our loved ones. Sharing our joys and sorrows, you and your family have been important to our life together in the Church of Jesus Christ. In our service to this community and in God's mission to the whole world, as you leave this community of faith, we say farewell and we pray for God's blessing. People of God, members of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church gathered in this place, gathered online, or gathered wherever you may be, do you release Pastor Craig Schweitzer from service as your pastor? Please respond with the words on the screen. We do and we give thanks to God for our ministry together. Pastor Craig Schweitzer, do you recognize and accept the completion of your ministry with Good Shepherd Lutheran Church? I do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry together. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. 
You equip your people with abilities that differ according to the grace given to them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give you thanks for the ministry of Pastor Craig Schweitzer among the people of God in this place. You watch over our going out and our coming in. Bless this time of ending and beginning. You surround your people in every time and place. Keep us close in your love. You accompany your people in times of joy and times of trial. Prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive all that has fallen short of your will for us. Help Pastor Craig and his family and all of us to live with the courage and gladness in the future you give to us. As they have been a blessing to us, now send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive this benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.